Let's travel to Mars. Mars has always been a hypothetical second home for humans. We actually have plans to start sending people and colonizing the red planet as soon as the next decade. Would you have what it takes to get to and live on Mars? Your first challenge is getting through the launch. And at around nine Gs, most humans black out from lack of blood to the brain. As a result, human missions are limited to around three Gs, or three times the force of gravity on Earth, which astronauts are trained to withstand. So, if you can survive the first few minutes without rocket system failures or depressurization issues, then your other concern is protecting yourself from the sun's radiation. Leaving Earth's atmosphere and its protection, you have an increased risk of cancer and damage to your central nervous system. You would want to go when Earth and Mars are most closely aligned, which only happens every two years, and you'll spend at least 150 days on your one-way trip. You might also want to consider removing your gallbladder and appendix for your extended flight, as it could protect those organs from bursting due to pressurization changes. Now that your body is transitioning to microgravity, you'll start to feel the negative effects of weightlessness. Your bodily fluids will shift upward throughout your body, causing headaches and temporary blindness. And you can also expect your digestive system to slow down as your body adjusts. Because of a limited space, you'd be wearing the same clothes for a long duration. Even astronauts on the ISS wear their underwear for up to a week, which is why female astronauts are more prone to getting UTIs in space. NASA's research shows that astronauts can lose up to 1% of bone minerals in density per month. If you're willing to work out two hours a day like astronauts aboard the ISS do, once you've landed on Mars, you'll instantly start to notice the differences between your new home and Earth. Mars is farther from the sun, so the temperature ranges between negative 220 degrees Fahrenheit to 86 degrees Fahrenheit. But that doesn't mean you can just walk outside on a warmer day. Earth's atmosphere is around 100 times more dense than Mars's, so you won't be protected from the sun's radiation. This means you might have to get used to living in an underground habitat. Leaving your habitat, you'd likely wear a sweaty 50-pound spacesuit to protect your blood from boiling or your organs rupturing from the lack of atmospheric pressure. The food would be freeze-dried food packed with nutritional requirements that tastes okay but has a mushy texture until your botanist can grow fresh fruit, vegetables, and grains. You'd have to get used to seeing no vegetation growing outside naturally, or any people or animals moving about. Using NASA's Mars simulation research, you would likely be living in a small habitat the size of a small 900 square foot apartment with a handful of other Martians. You would need to get along with people, or it may be difficult to find people to mate with and grow a colony. Genetic diversity is an important part of keeping large groups healthy. Before leaving the ground, you would also have to pass a space agency's astronaut test before going, which are physically and mentally rigorous. If you were accepted, would you want to go?